Hello, and welcome to my channel. Try This is a series breaking down a certain game or play style of a game. Today we're going to be talking Commander and breaking down Feather the Redeemed. The video is broken down in the chapters which you can find in the description or in the timeline. I'll be briefly covering Feather, then break down some win conditions and how we'll get there. I'll talk about some mana base and card draw strategies. I'll discuss other synergistic cards in the deck and why I think they'll help. I'll cover some other cards I cut from my example list, why they didn't fit my list but they might fit yours. And finally, I'll move on to some other budget suggestions for the deck. If you like this content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps other viewers discover the content I produce and is a great way to show support. With that said, let's dive in. Feather is a 3-4 angel that costs red, white, white and has flying. She also has whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature you control, exile that card instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. If you do, return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Feather is a fantastic commander that provides a unique playstyle for the Voltron archetype. Having the ability to recur our cantrip not only opens up so many options for us to build around, but keeps our options open in the game as well. It also keeps our opponents guessing as the options available to our commander isn't always apparent. The buffs we'll be giving her are mostly in our hand instead of the battlefield, basically turning our deck into a giant combat trick. I normally don't play Boros commanders, but I would bet that Feather has probably the highest draw potential among them. Actually, among all the commanders I built around, Feather has one of the most reliable card draw engines. She is actually so consistent that her biggest drawback is the consistency itself. One of my favorite parts about Commander is the replayability. This is one of the reasons I avoid reliable combos, because it makes the deck feel repetitive without any interesting challenges to overcome. Feather is somewhat a unicorn among Voltron decks with how reliable she can be. Cantrips are the chaff of Magic the Gathering sets. There are so many random single target cards that provide a variety of buffs that building Feather lists can be incredibly flexible. Stick around for the budget section of the video and I'll show you an example of how easy it is to find cards for Feather. Though I didn't build my list as a budget deck, I think she's a great option for one. Most of the spells that synergize with her are almost next to free. Of the 21 cards in this list that we'd likely use to buff Feather, 16 of them are under a quarter on TCG player at the time of recording. I think she's also a great option for new players to build around as she's budget friendly and she's a good exercise in learning to play around the stack. Our primary win condition is killing our opponents with commander damage. We're going to amass a ton of cantrips into our hand to assemble Feather into her best possible self at instant speed to beat them down. We have several ways to increase your power with various cantrips. Some of them can provide useful abilities like Trample and Double Strike to further increase our damage or provide evasion. On top of the cantrips, I'm also including several artifacts and enchantments we'll get into later that will also increase your lethality. I'm running one backup win condition in Aetherflux Reservoir. With all the cantrips we're running, this card will not only gain us a bunch of life, but will likely enable us to blast our opponents for lethal damage. Gutter Snipe, Firebrand Archer, and Electrostatic Fields are all cards that will ping our opponents when we cast our cantrips and could possibly close out the game also. This might seem redundant as we're focusing on commander damage for the win, however these cards can bring our opponent's life total way down so we don't need to do the 21 damage with Feather. This way we can focus on commander damage for one opponent and then wrap up the lower health ones later. I'm running my usual auto-includes in Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Thematic Compass. Thematic Compass can fix our mana early in the game, which is needed in a Feather deck even though it's only two colors. It flips into a Strictly Better Maze of Ith for added protection, which is useful because we only have 12 creatures, including our commander. I'm also running Sword of the Animus, Thought Vessel, and Sudden Breakthrough for added ramp. The sword can fetch basics and increase Feather's power. Thought Vessel can expand our hand size to accommodate all the cantrips we'll have. Sudden Breakthrough we can recast over and over again to not only buff Feather but ramp us. Primal Amulet will flip into the land that similarly to Pyromancer's Goggles can copy our spells for added value. Keep in mind the restriction on the goggles as it only copies red spells. Regardless, both are useful in this deck to copy our cantrips. I'm also running Storm Kiln Artist and Smothering Tithe to create more treasures. The Artist is especially good in this deck as many of our cantrips will pay for themselves with its ability. This will allow us to cast them on each of our opponent's turns, which is nice for some of the draw spells I'll cover in the next section. Last but not least is Chromatic Lantern. This is normally a mana rock that is reserved for decks with more colors that have a complex mana base. However, in a Feather deck, I think it's a welcome include. Though we only have two colors to worry about, most of our cantrips are one or two CMC. This means we have a lot more mana pips to worry about and we need to use specific colors. Normally in two color decks, you only have to worry about getting a few lands that can produce each color, and then the rest cover the generic mana cost. With cantrips, we have little to no generic mana cost. 
so we're actually always under this color fixing stipulation. Chromatic Lantern solves this by letting all of our lands tap for whatever we need. You could argue it really isn't needed, but for me, it's one less thing to worry about. This way, I can focus on the combination of cantrips I'm going to cast instead. Alright, time to talk about card draw. This is something Feather does not struggle with at all, as long as she's on the battlefield anyway. Of the 21 cantrips we'd use on our creatures, 9 of them draw cards. Since they return to our hand at the next end step, we can actually use them again on each of our opponent's turns, assuming we have mana for it. All we need to do is draw one of these 9 cards, and we could potentially draw 4 cards around. Well, admittedly 8 cards, as one is Ryle, which is sorcery speed. This can often snowball into a massive draw engine. If we start with one in our hand, we'll eventually draw into another and another and another. Our draw potential is then capped by our mana production. This is where Stormkiln Artist really shines in cards like Bandage and Expedite. I'm also running Court of Grace to introduce the Monarch into the game. Honestly, it's here mostly to generate creatures, but Monarch is a nice bonus. We don't really need it to draw the extra cards though. We're going to start off with two powerhouse cards in Zada Hedron Grinder and Mirror Wing Dragon. These cards copy our cantrips assuming they target either of them. So while she and one of these creatures are out, every creature gets the cantrip's effects and we can still reuse the cantrip later on. Let's set up a hypothetical board state real fast. Feather, Zada, and Artist are on the field. We can cast Bandage for one mana, targeting Zada, who copies it for each creature. We just drew three cards and made three treasures for one mana, and we can do it again on the next player's turn. This is the ideal board state, but even missing Zada, missing the Artist, or without either of them, it's still a ton of value with Feather. For added synergy, I'm running Young Pyromancer and Monastery Mentor to create creature tokens. We're going to need them as we only have 12 including Feather. I'm not going to cover all the cantrips in this deck, but I'll shout out some exceptional ones. Boros Charm and Dawn Charm are flexible cantrips that have a variety of uses. They both have target abilities on them that we can use while getting them back later for their other modes if needed. Fists of Flame, Team or Battle Rage, and Seize the Day are some cards that can enable Feather as a finisher. With all the cards we draw, Fists of Flame's buff could be substantial. We only need to increase Feather's power by 1 for Team or Battle Rage, Flying, Trample, and Double Strike are a terrifying triple threat combination for a Voltron Commander. Seize the Day gives us an extra combat step to stretch our cantrip's value even more. Cards like Chaos Warp and Grape Shot are two cards that we wouldn't mind actually targeting our own creatures with. Let's say Zada, Feather, and Young Pyromancer are on the field. If there is a board wipe because the Pyromancer is getting out of control, and we don't have a way to give our things indestructible, then why not use Chaos Warp on our stuff? More than likely we'll hit lands or artifacts if we don't hit an instant spell. With all the cantrips we cast to enable Feather, Grape Shot is actually an amazing card. The original spell can deal 1 damage to one of our creatures, and then the storm copies can hit something else. Dreadhorde Arcanist, Mavinda Student's Advocate, and the Emblem on Jaya Ballard are cards that will let us recur our cantrips if they somehow ended up in the graveyard. Mavinda only lets us cast one spell per turn, but we can also get spells on our opponent's turns and most of our cantrips are instant speed. Spellbook, Reliquary Tower, and Thought Vessel are cards that will expand our hand. They're needed to contain all the cantrips we're going to amass throughout the game. Cards like Darksteel Plate, Shelter, and Ajani's Presence can save Feather and our other high synergy creatures. With the latter two being cantrips, it makes dealing with our creatures very difficult for our opponents. Fiery Emancipation will pour Nos all over our commander and the pink creatures I mentioned before. This enchantment honestly makes eliminating our opponent with Feather very reliable as we only have to buff her by 4 power. If our draw engine is online, this should be pretty easy to do with the cantrips we have. Finally, we have Sunforger. This totally balanced equipment will let us tutor out any of our cantrip effects. Of the 27 instant cards in our deck, this equipment can tutor for all of them. The cutting room floor is where I talk about some cards around or over $10 at the time of recording that I cut from my list for various reasons but are worth mentioning the run. These cards didn't find a home in my list, but they might find a home in yours. Starting off is Goldspan Dragon, who can provide us with more treasures and then tap them for additional mana. I thought this was a win more card in this deck, and the extra mana it gives the treasures would actually go to waste in most cases. With how low our cantrips cost, and having a pretty even split between red and white cards, we're likely going to have mismatched mana from the treasures. It might not be that big of a deal, but I didn't think it was worth running in the list for this reason. Next is Lithoform Engine, which can double up our cantrips or our alternate win condition in Aetherflux Reservoir. I ended up cutting it because its copy effect is way less efficient than just casting another similar cantrip. 
Also, running a card for the specific purpose of synergizing with another card in the 99 I think is a mistake without tutors to make it more reliable. And since I'm not running any tutors, it isn't worth running for the synergy with Aetherflux either. Last is Dockside Extortionist. This creature's ramp can vary, but well-timed can provide us with a ton of ramp in the game. We'd get a ton of mileage with the treasures it makes because our cantrips are so cheap. Overall, it's just a solid card. If I ran Flicker cantrips in this deck, then maybe I would include it, but overall Dockside didn't feel needed. I never really had an issue with ramping, and Stormkill and Artist just synergized with the deck more. As I mentioned before, there are a ton of cantrips throughout Magic's history, and most of them are very cheap and could work with Feather. Brute Force, Double Cleave, and Ephemerate are some good examples of this. Honestly, you could probably go to mythicspoiler.com, pick a random set, and find some cantrips that would work to some degree. In writing this script, I actually tried this out. I went to the website, literally closed my eyes, and then clicked randomly on the page. I ended up in Shadowmoor, finding Nevis Wisp. Since I already run Crimson Wisp, which is already in this set, I decided to try again. The second time I ended up in Fate Reforged. I found Pressure Point and Valorous Stance. Teamer Battle Rage is also here, but again I already run that card. There are cards everywhere that fit this deck, so your options are basically endless. Moving on from that exercise, I have Library of Lang as another budget card. This is another card that can give us no maximum hand size. I already have three cards that provide this effect, but if you're having trouble digging through your deck to find them, then I'd recommend including it. For me, three was good enough, and I saved the extra slot for another cantrip. For added ramp, I'd recommend Dousing Dagger, as it should be easy to flip with Feather having flying. It taps for three mana, which is a bit overkill with cantrips, and runs into the same issue as the Goldspan Dragon. However, being a land that sticks around, who cares if it's not that efficient. Last is 10th District Legionnaire. This creature gets buffed and lets us scry whenever it gets targeted. This could be really useful when we're building our draw engine. Not only do we build up a scary creature, but the scry trigger resolves first, allowing us to somewhat filter our draws. I don't normally break down budget lands or other mana rocks. There are so many, and honestly the options are just endless. With a little bit of looking around, you can find whatever suits your needs and preferences. I always shout out managathering.com for this reason, as it has an organized list of lands and rocks that are easy to navigate. It is also an incredible resource when building in colors you are not really familiar with. I didn't cover every card in this deck or every suggestion I have for Feather, so if you'd like to see the rest, check out the deck list in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. Comment below on cards you think synergize well with this commander, and if you have any suggestions for commanders to build in the future. Thank you so much for watching, good luck, and have fun.